This time starting in this video, we are looking at single variable data. So that includes box plots, it includes histograms, and it includes cumulative frequency diagrams. So the first thing we'll look at is a box and whisker plot. As data is often summarized in terms of minimum values, lower quartile, medium, upper quartile, and maximum values. And you can use a box and whisker plot to display these values. So this shows here a box plot, and it says that children from two schools A and B took part in a competition to complete a puzzle. So the distribution of times taken to the nearest minute by children in school A are shown in the box plot below. So here it shows. Now, in order to see what's going on, we have to know which it is actually trying to say. So this line here, that is the lowest value. So the lowest value in this particular one is going to be 7. Then this first one here, that is the lower quartile, so Q1. And in this case, that is going to be 11. Then this is Q2, which is also the median. So the median in this case is going to be 14. And then this is Q3, which is the upper quartile. So then the upper quartile is 17. Then finally, this one here, that is the highest value. Now these two things here, technically that one is the highest value, but they're not included. And this is because these are outliers. So we do not include them in our data and we'll briefly soon talk about how to work out an outlier. So first of all, it asks us, write down the time by which 75% of the children at school A had completed the puzzle. So for this one, we're looking at this upper quarter, 75%. So that is going to be 17 minutes. Then B is saying, state what the two crosses represent on the box plot above and interpret it and interpret these in context. So this is the outliers. And we can say if we're interpreting this in context, it's students um, with an extreme time. So it's students who uh, exceeded what was average at all. It is completely over what would average and it would skew the data if we were to include them. So next is asking for school B. And it says for school B, the shortest time taken was six minutes. The longest time taken was 22 minutes and the quartiles were 12, 15 and 17 minutes respectively. So determine if there were any outliers. And in order to determine if there were any outliers, we have to use this idea of Q1 minus 1.5 times by the interquartile range. Now, a lot of questions will give you this, but it's still useful to remember it. Now, this is because it could not give, it, there's potential that it won't give you it in the question, and it doesn't give you it in this particular question here. So Q1 is going to be 12. That's minus, and then 1.5 times by the interquarter range. The interquarter range is five, so that's 1.5 times by five, that is equal to 4.5. Now, as we can see, the shortest time was six minutes. That is above 4.5, so that is not an outlier. But then the longest time is 22 minutes. So the other thing we need to do is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR into quartile range. That is equal to 17 plus, and then 
times by 5. And that is equal to 24.5. So therefore, 22 is less than 24.5. So we can say no outliers. So the final thing it's asking us to do is to draw a box plot for this information. We have our box plot here, and we know that the shortest time is six minutes. So therefore, we're going to draw a line here that's at six minutes. The longest time was 22 minutes. So 22 minutes is going to be here. So we're drawing a line there. Obviously, we've got no outliers, as we just established there. So we do not need to have any outliers. And that's why those two are our shortest and longest time, respectively. Then there are the quartiles. So our lowest quartile is going to be 12. Now, 12 is going to be here. And then our median is 15. So median is going to be there. And then finally, our upper quartile is 17. So that is going to be there. So therefore, those are connected. And then we have that there and that there. So that is how you want to draw a box plot. So the next part of single variable data to look at is histograms. And histograms are used to display continuous data and their areas are proportional to the three frequencies of the groups. So the X axis is the interval, whilst the Y axis is the frequency density. So in the thing to work out the frequency density, what you have to do is frequency divided by class width. And that is extremely important. So this is a question we have here. It gives us a half finished histogram and a half finished table. Now, one thing that we do need to do in when we're doing with histograms is use a continuity correction. Now, when continuous variables are rounded, a continuity correction must be used. And this involves altering the endpoints so that it includes all the values which would fall in the interval when rounded. So, for example, we have our table here. And we'll add an extra thing here, which will show our continuary correction. So the starting off, this will in fact go from 0 0.5 to 4.5. Then this shall go from 4.5 to 8.5. This will go from 8.5 to 10.5. This shall go from 10.5 and then finish on 15.5. And then finally, this will go 15.5 and then 20.5. So that is using our continuing correction. And when we will use a class width, we'll have to use that. So for example, the class width of this is four and not three. So then it asks us to complete the table. So in order to complete the table, we're gonna have to first at work but first work out what this frequency density is actually measured in. And in order to do that, we can look at this 4.5 to 8.5. We know that we have a frequency of 12. So we can write up here that frequency density is equal to the frequency of 12 and then our class width of four divided by four. So therefore looking on the table, we know that this is going to be three. If we count up how many spaces there is, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that means that every five spaces is one. So one, two, three, four, five. We have our first one there, and then one, two, three, four, five. Two is there. 
Now we're going to see 2 is the same as this. So this one here is 2. So therefore, we know that the frequency density of this one here, which we're looking at, the 11 to 15, is 2. So therefore, we can say 2 is equal. And then we have our frequency, which is the thing we're trying to work out. So we'll just put f over our class width. Our class width is 5. Therefore, f is equal to 10. So we can put 10 there. Then it asks us to complete the histogram. So in order to complete the histogram, we need to work out what the frequency densities are. So the first one here, we've got a frequency of 2 and a class width of 4. So we can say 2 over 4 is equal to 0.5. So therefore, that shall go from 0.5 there. So we have a 0.5 here. Then our next one, we've already got that there, so we're having to work out this one here. We have a frequency of 8, and we have a class width of 2. That is going to equal 4. So therefore, if we're looking at 4, we're right at the top here. So that means that this one shall be all the way up here. This will go all the way up here as well. And that is there. And you could shade that in if you so wanted to. Then we have the next value here that's going up to 15.5. So we just have a final value here. And we have the frequency, which is 3, divided by a class width of 5. That is 0.6 which is there. That is going to go up to 20.5. So there we are. That's how we have, we've now completed the histogram. So the final question here says to estimate uh, one of the participants is selected at random. So estimate the probability that this participant completed the puzzle in under 10 seconds. So as this is a grouped data, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to use it and estimate it, it's not going to be exactly right because there is intervals. So we know that one of the participants is selected at random. So if it's going to be under 10 seconds, this one goes up to 10.5. So we know that it could be either this person, these people who did it from 1 to 4 seconds or 5 to 8 seconds. So therefore we have 14. But then this is where the estimate comes in. As we have four sections, we've got 8.5 to 10.5, and we have 8, the frequency of 8. So therefore, what we're going to have is 3 quarters. Now that is because it could be, it could be, um, we've got 1.5 divided by 2, which is obviously 3 quarters, and then that should be times by 8. Now it's times by 8 because that frequency is 8. That is therefore equal to 20 there. So now we have that. We've got 20. That shall be over the whole frequency. Frequency added up is equal to 35. So therefore, the probability that a participant could repeat this puzzle in under 10 seconds is going to be 20 over 35. So the final part of single variable data is a cumulative frequency diagram. And this is another way to display continuous data and it takes the sums of all the frequencies and puts them in an always increasing curve. So for example, we have the frequencies here and then we're adding them all up together and that's why it's always increasing. So drawing a dotted line from the y-axis from here can help you estimate the, the value of any required quartile or any um, required value. So for example, if we're looking for the 20th value, you could go across there and then you'd find around 10. Then these points are also plotted at the end of the interval. So for example, the ends of the intervals here are 1, 
we've got 3, we have 7, 10, 16, 24, 31, so on. Um, so that's why, for example, you have here, this point is plotted here and not in the midpoint. It is plotted at the end, it's plotted at the point 10. And this point here is plotted at 16, for example, because that is the end of the interval. But this particular question is asking that the heights of a sample of a species of plant are recorded, copy the frequency table and use the cumulative frequency graph to fill in the missing values. So therefore, we just have to see where these values are going up to and then see where, because this is cumulative, and convert that into just frequency. So the first one we're looking at, that goes up to 3. Then once we get to 7, we're going up to 10. So therefore what we'll do is 10 minus 3, that is equal to 7. Then the next value is 10, which goes up to 20. So this time, we're going to be doing 20, but it's going to be minus everything in before. Everything before is 10. So therefore, 20 minus 10 is equal to 10. So there we have 10. Then we have the next value here. It's an extra 9, which is going to be taking our cumulative total up to 29, as we see here. And then our next one here, so 24, that goes to 35. So therefore, we're doing 35 minus everything before, which is 29. That is equal to 6. So we have 6. So finally, from 31, we go up and we've got 37. So we do 37 minus everything before, which is 35. That is equal to 2. So we have two there. Now it doesn't ask us in the question, but we will just look at how to uh, calculate the intercortical, uh, the intercortical range or the uh, Q3 or Q1 or the medium. And if for data that is given in intervals like this is, you can use n over two, n over four, and three n over four for the median uh, Q1 and Q3. And that's different because normally you might do n plus one over two, but when it's an interval, you don't need to do that. So therefore, if you're working out the lower quartile, if you do Q1, that's equal to 37 over 4, which is the 9.25 value. So therefore, if we go to the y-axis there, look for about the 9.25 value, and you get around 7. Not exact, but around 7. If you're looking at Q2, we will get 37 divided by 2. That is equal to the 18.5 value. So therefore, around here, and you'll get around nine and then finally if you're looking at q3 you would have that idea of three times 37 over four which is equal to the 27.75 value 70 so that therefore is going to be equal to around there and then going down you're looking at around 14, 13 slash 14. So again, not exact. If it was maybe bigger, then you would maybe get a more exact answer and with a ruler and everything. But that is how you would work it out in principle. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.